This is TV Dissection, where we shove TV under a microscope, slice it open, and see if it works, how it works, and more importantly, why. This will be the slot where I discuss any TV show that I feel like mocking whenever it comes along, as to paraphrase Obi-Wan Kenobi, you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy than ITV's evening schedule. I mostly want to do this one because I'm currently trying to write a sitcom about people that make bizarre and inexplicable daytime TV, which you'll probably hear more about at some point. So yeah, this TV related slot is more for my personal research purposes more than anything. This one I've got here is just an example, which uses mostly recycled material that I've used elsewhere, with a show that you'll probably at least be aware of. BBC One's flagship magazine show, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean, is The One Show, a daily mishmash of things that some producers think that you might care about. Basically, a potentially interesting subject lottery. I appreciate it for what it is, and lots of people do and don't, but boiling it down to basics, the little it can do is accomplished to about as mediocre and inoffensive level as you'd expect from something like this. It's basically the show that defines exactly what TV was invented for. It's a glowing orb in the corner of the room for you to stare at, and nothing more than that. Switch your brain off and absorb the moving images. Lucy Siegel will be out on the farms for us over the next few days. Uh, she's in Norfolk to see how they're coping with one of the worst years of bad weather on record. So how's it looking out there today, Lucy? Okay, am I the only one thinking, if someone started talking about this stuff in general conversation, you tell them to shut the fuck up. Honestly, watching the one show is like being mad. One minute it's an interview with a celebrity you've probably heard of, next minute suddenly it's about an earthworm farm or something. And I wouldn't be able to tell you how they went from one thing to the other. They just take random topics from this week's spider diagram and just shove them together without any rhyme or reason. I just want to pat the one show on the head as it goes, did you know I once met Beatrix Potter? Yes, you did one show, that's very interesting. And did you know, I did a diagram about all the different types of salt. Ooh, isn't that nice. I'm gonna put it on the fridge. It goes out at 7 p.m., that's just as you've got back from work, you're sitting down and watching a story about someone who started a florist once. Now ask yourself a question. Why are you spending your spare time watching this? Half the stuff that they're talking about you could actually spend your spare time doing instead of watching other people do it. Go outside, start that earthworm farm, give them all names, have them establish a monarchy, make them overthrow that monarchy in a violent and bloody communist uprising. Go pick some flowers, learn how to make a cheesecake. Why does this show need to exist? Go on, put some effort into your hobbies. Another question, why the hell is this on iPlayer? Who voluntarily watches the one show? It's the sort of thing to lazily have on in the background, and when you tune out, you look up and suddenly you're like, uh, um, what? Uh, okay, uh, they're talking about gardening equipment. Uh, why the hell am I watching this? Although it is an admirable amount of effort that goes into it, they have to come up with topics on a daily basis. They must be tearing their hair out for ideas most days. Though if anyone from the one show's watching, guarantee that you can just rerun some features that you made a year ago, and literally, no one will notice the difference. In fact, how do you know that the one show didn't run out of ideas ages ago and decided to just start repeating them and just re-record the opening links and go, Hello, it's definitely the 12th of December 2014. Yes, it is. That is the real date. Here's a feature about Combine Harvesters, which definitely wasn't recorded last year. Because, you know, they've got to make 30 minutes a day. Come on, speed up, make this content. Who says that they're not just repeating them? Because are there any full series links online that you can go and check? Maybe that's why they've called it The One Show. Because they've only made one show and no one's noticed yet. Um, yeah, this is borderline libelous, isn't it? Uh, uh, yes, BBC management, it was a joke. I actually looked at the recent viewing figures and it's strangely one of the most popular shows the BBC put out for some reason. In fact, I've applied for internships at the BBC many times and one of their key questions for applicants is devise a segment for the one show. 
as though it's some sort of benchmark for TV. If you can come up with a suitable 10 minutes of someone talking about a historical building, a TV show, an element in the periodic table, methods of knitting, or colour hex codes or something, you can come and work at the BBC, where we love boring everyday topics. I started off doing serious pitches, including stuff about castles or some of the lesser-known charities like People Against Carpet Burn or something, and after about five failed applications and I realised I was never going to get the place, I just started having fun with it. The One Show presents a history of moss. No one really knows what moss is. Is it a vegetable? Or perhaps a living organism like yeast? The One Show presents an interview with the man that came up with putting a little rubber on the end of a pencil and the feud with his brother who came up with the rubber bits on the end of chair legs. They have had at least nine pitches from me so far about why there are different types of sand, and positing the theory that ghosts are somehow involved, just to mess with their recruitment staff's heads, because they're not going to hire me anyway. This week, The One Show asks, Why are there different types of sand? Well, we believe that it is excreted by invisible ghosts. Look, here's proof in a video, which was taken by Professor Frankenstech in 1967, documenting this amazing discovery. Oh my god, did you see that? That's proof! Uh, yeah, I'm just kidding. Please give me a job, One Show, because, let's face it, you need ideas.